Anyways, that's the mythological aspect. I want to read you a good story about rats, because I want to show you how deeply grounded these sorts of notions are. I want to tell you a little story first before I read this. I was watching a Bugs Bunny cartoon the other day with my kids, and um, you're probably more or less familiar with the Bugs Bunny cartoon characters. There's a sheepdog and a, and a wolf, and they go to work in the morning, and the sheepdog's job is to guard the sheep, and the wolf's job is to eat them, and they punch the time clock in, and then they go into their <laughs> respective roles. Anyways, the sheepdog is always beating the wolf up badly, and he gets the real rough end of the stick. Now, there's one scene there. The sheepdog is sitting on a cliff watching the sheep, and it's raining, and the wolf gets a bright idea. He's going to put hair <laughs> tonic on the sheepdog's head, okay? And it's raining so that the sheepdog won't notice. So he sneaks up behind the sheep, and he puts hair tonic on his head, and hair grows down over his eyes, right? Now, so the sheepdog's sitting there, and the wolf climbs up the cliff. And the first thing he does is he has a hand, a glove on a stick. So he's hiding behind the cliff, and he puts the hand on the stick, and he raises it in front of the sheepdog's face. No response. Now, that wolf is exploring unexplored territory. And it does it cautiously. It sticks his stick up there. Nothing happens. So then the next thing it does is it just pokes its head up and goes right down. And it looks. Nothing terrible happens. So then it climbs up on top of the cliff. And it waves its hand in front of the sheep. Oh, it's starting to smile now. It thinks it's pretty smart. Now, it's jumping up and down and so on. OK, so it's explored the territory. It's mapped it. Originally, the unexplored territory was anxiety provoking. The wolf underwent a whole sequence of exploratory activities, mapped the territory, it's safe, so then it's off to steal a sheep. Okay, that's funny. It was funny because animators are great at picking out what we do and exaggerating them, so they're comical. That's exploring unknown territory. Okay. Most of the time when behavioral psychologists teach a rat to be afraid, and that's what they think they're doing, they take a rat that's secure. So they presume that the natural state of the rat is secure. But the only bloody reason the rat's secure is because it's already explored its cage. So you put a rat in a cage and it'll freeze because it's scared. And then if nothing terrible happens to it, it unfreezes and then it slowly starts to explore and it might just move its eyes first and sniff. And then if nothing terrible happens, it starts to move and soon it checks out the whole cage. And if nothing is in there that it's, that's going to kill it, it has a nap or whatever. Maybe it looks for some food, but it has to explore before it's secure. Now, more modern animal psychologists, ethologists, are starting to study the reactions of things like rats in their natural habitat. And that's what this story is about. So you take a rat, and rats, they're social, set them up in a burrow, and they let them set up their burrow, and they map out their territory by exploring. So they have this whole burrow system set up, and the rats know it. Nothing's dangerous there. That's home. Put a cat in one section of it. Okay, that's this story. When a cat is presented to an established mixed-sex group of laboratory rats living in a visible burrow, the behaviors of the subjects change dramatically. In many cases, for 24 hours or more, the initial active defensive behavior, flight to the tunnel chamber system. So the rats are cruising along where they think it's safe, and there's a cat. Well, it's like home into the burrow. It's followed by a period of immobility during which the rats make 22 kilohertz ultrasonic vocalization which apparently serve as alarm cries at a high rate. So they're, to put it, uh, they're freaked out fundamentally. They run home and scream. They're frozen. And they scream. Like, <laughs> they must be screaming something like, oh no, there's a cat. And all the other rats <laughs> hear this. And they're all in their burrows. They're terrified. They're frozen into immobility by the appearance of this unexpected thing. As freezing breaks up, it's interesting. Think of a good myth as Perseus and the Gorgon. Show the face of the Gorgon. It's this female head that's covered with snakes. That's an image of the unknown. That thing turns you to stone. Anyways, as freezing breaks up, proxemic avoidance of the open area gradually gives way to a pattern of risk assessment of the area where the cat was encountered. Okay, so the rats are frozen, and they think, you know, oh no, death is around the corner. They don't precisely think that, but that's how they act. And if nothing happens that's also terrible, well, they start to relax a little bit. And as soon as they start to relax, the circuitry, like they're very curious about this unexpected occurrence, but they're overwhelmed by anxiety. They don't do any exploring. They run back and make sure that nothing terrible happens, just like that wolf did with the sheepdog. They run back, and as their anxiety recedes, their curiosity starts to predominate. So they go back to the open area. Subjects poke their heads out of the tunnel openings to scan the open area where the cat was presented for minutes or hours before emerging. So they're like watching. This is new territory now. There was not supposed to be a cat there, so let's just see what happens. So they're watching and watching and remapping the territory. 
When they do emerge, their locomotory patterns are characterized, well, they kind of run flat, so they can't be seen. But the thing that's really neat is they do short corner runs. I think this is so interesting. So you think, here's the area that the calf was seen, okay? So it's like, cat. <laughs> right? Now the rats saw the cat there, so this is, this is all of a sudden being re-novelized, this area. It was once mapped and made secure, but the appearance of the cat there has thrown their plans for a loop. So what do the rats do? Well, the cats disappeared, but they don't trust this area anymore because it was associated with the cat. So they do corner runs. The bravest of rats leaps out of his tunnel and runs right across a small area. And if, if he doesn't get killed, that's safe. So then he runs back, takes another chunk out of it. Safe. Other rats are doing the same thing. Soon, if there's no cat, the whole area is mapped again. These risk assessment areas appear to involve active gathering of information about possible danger sources providing a basis for a gradual return to non-defensive behaviors. Active risk assessment is not seen during early post-cat exposure, but rises to a peak about 10 hours later. These rats are scared. Non-defensive behaviors such as eating, drinking, and sexual and aggressive activity tend to be reduced over the same period. Well, that's because the anxiety system just predominates. It's like you don't think about anything else when there's a cat around. So it's such a, it's such a great story because you get an idea of how the rats' universe is set up. It's like, there's known territory, and then there's unknown territory. And when known and known territory can turn into unknown territory as soon as something unpredictable happens. And when something unpredictable happens, that whole area is, much, is made novel again, and the rats have to undergo this very complex pattern of exploratory activity to make their territory secure again. So that's, that's quite interesting. <laughs>